China also enforces silence at home. You don't ask questions there or report negative stories. The consequences can be severe. Negative stories like blasts. Have you heard of this? Blasts in China. You may not have because Beijing is making sure most media do not report it. It is hiding high intensity blasts, explosions across the country, at least 10 of them that we can report. All within a week, 10 explosions, 10 bomb blasts in one country in less than a week. And this is not Yemen we are talking about. We are talking about China. What's happening there? Who's behind these blasts? How many lives did they claim? Were there injuries? Again, this is China. It simply won't tell. But we're going to try and find out. Let's begin by looking at where and when these blasts took place. The first one was reported on the 21st of October. It happened in the Liaoning province. The blast took place at a hotel. It was high intensity. Five people died. 47 others were injured. One day later, there was another blast. This time in Inner Mongolia. The blast was reported at a chemical plant. Again, it was high in intensity. Four people died. At least three others were injured. Two days later, there were two more blasts. One in the Wafangdian city, another in Nanjing. The second one was at a university lab, a laboratory. It wasn't one of those chemical experiments gone wrong or a test tube blast. This blast killed people, at least four. The next day, there was another blast in another university. This time, it was the Shandong University's Huangdao campus. An explosion rocked the North Gate. Nothing has been reported on the deaths or injuries yet. A day after this blast, there were three high-intensity blasts in three Chinese provinces. The first one was in Shandong. Some trucks parked in the province's Zibo city mysteriously blew up. Some said the blast was so strong that people staying 20 kilometers from the blast site felt terrified. They felt the impact. The same day, two more explosions rocked Guangdong and Jiangxi. On the 27th of October, another blast rocked Guangdong. Now, we don't know very much about where exactly this happened or how many people were injured or killed, if at all. But we do know that on the same day, a blast also ripped through the city of Tianjin. So that's 10 blasts that we've counted so far, 10 blasts, 13 deaths, and many more injuries in just seven days in China. And that's just on paper. It's hard to tell how much worse this story is. The question is, why are high-intensity blasts taking place in China? Are these freak accidents? Or are these coordinated attacks? Are specific groups targets? Or are some kind of consignments the target here? Labs are blowing up. Trucks safely stationed in parking bays are also blowing up. Food streets are blowing up, as are residential complexes. It's hard to say they're linked. But it's even harder to rule out foul play because, you know, it's China. Nothing here can be taken at face value. This is a country that's infamous for its purges. Anyone and everyone in China can mysteriously disappear. It does not matter if you're the Alibaba boss or the Interpol chief. So are these blasts part of a purge campaign? Is China trying to get rid of some dissidents here? Is the Chinese media brushing off these blasts as accidents? Global Times blamed the Liaoning blast on aging pipelines and the Nanjing lab blast on system, systemic negligence. That's what they said. But here's something that you must consider. The blasts preceded the Chinese Communist Party's plenary. The timing is very significant. As we speak, the CCP's Central Committee is meeting in Beijing. For Chinese President Xi Jinping, this plenary will be his chance to further impose his authority over his country, over his party. This is his chance to portray himself as a force bigger than Mao Zedong. Xi Jinping wants the title of China's most powerful leader and secure a third term in office. This meeting is a build-up to the 20th Party Congress that will happen next year. And that's when Xi Jinping is expected to be handed a third term in office. Right now, these Chinese Communist Party members are reviewing the years gone by, that's what they say, and trying to sketch a map for the road ahead. From where I sit, the road does not look too smooth. There are several hurdles, starting with the virus they made in Wuhan. Well, cases are rising again in China, plus there is a debt bomb that's exploding. 
that is exploding one default at a time. In less than 24 hours from now, Chinese developer Evergrande will have to make another round of payments. More than $148 million is due for the 11th of November. The company narrowly escaped defaults in October. Will it miss the deadline this time? Well, shares of Evergrande are already down in anticipation. And this is just one player we are talking about in China's real estate industry. The sector currently owes around $5 trillion. There have already been some offshore debt defaults, credit rating downgrades and share sell-offs. Real estate was one of the main drivers of China's much-celebrated growth. Today it's become a liability. Properties are on hold, apartments have not been de delivered and people are waiting. Obviously they're unhappy. So were the mysterious blasts the CCP's way of instilling fear in the hearts of people? Because we know for sure that people in China have a lot to complain about right now. China's zero COVID strategy has fallen flat, for instance. The country is in the middle of a Delta outbreak. And this has been called the worst outbreak since Wuhan, since last year. The situation in China has become so bad that Beijing is offering cash in exchange of information or tips regarding the outbreak. A few days ago, China had to lock down Disneyland in Shanghai. They tested every guest, 34,000 people locked up in Disneyland because one visitor tested positive. At least 940 locally transmitted cases have been reported in China since October. At least 20 provinces have been affected. And quick disclaimer here, do not trust these numbers. These are numbers being reported by China. So much like everything else coming out of China, these figures are hard to trust. Consider this. China still maintains that its Wuhan virus death toll is a little over 4,500. It's been that way for months, 4,500 deaths only in the city where the first outbreak was reported. There have been numerous outbreaks, numerous clusters, but this number, 4,500, remains unchanged in China. You see, covering up is an art. It's an art that China masters in, be it blasts, a debt crisis, a virus in Wuhan, leave it to China, and it will cover it all up. Try to fool the world as many times as possible. The challenge is to call China's bluff, expose it, and make it pay when possible. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.